only 369 US dollars. That is the price that AMD launched their flagship Radeon video card in 2010. What a difference to the prices that we're seeing now. The latest Radeon launched for 999 US dollars, quite a difference. Another interesting aspect about 2010 was the competition between AMD and Nvidia. It was fierce, new models all the time, refreshes all the time, price drops and all sorts of shenanigans with last minute driver releases and whatnot. It's quite different, now things are quite boring, all the new models seem to be focusing on the high end and yeah that's one reason why i really like this hobby it's a lot of fun and you don't have to spend too much here we have the graphics card in all its glory this model is from sapphire and yeah it's quite a big one so let's take a closer look we have pisa express 2.0 16 lanes this video card can consume quite a bit of power we've got 8 pin and a 6 pin power connector here at the back of the card and let's talk about all the display outputs of this video card. It supports iFinity and you could connect six monitors and have a massive desktop and also play uh, games with surround graphics. So I tested all the ports with DVI. I only have a monitor that goes up to 1920 by 1200 with DVI and that's the maximum resolution I got. And then I tested HDMI and yeah, really good. We have a few options that you don't see on Nvidia graphics cards, especially under Windows XP. For example, the HDMI pixel format, you can select full or limited RGB, as well as 444 or 422 YCBCR. There's also a slider for overscan and underscan that can come in handy if you're using a older TV that uh, applies some overscan to the image. To test the mini display ports, I had to rush out and buy an adapter. And the good news is it supports higher resolution. You can use a 1440p panel at full 60 hertz. And if we look closely, we can see VGA here. So that means we can use a DVI to VGA dongle and connect a good old CRT monitor. Let's check the specifications. 1,536 shaders, a GPU clock of 880 megahertz. The memory runs at 1,375 megahertz. We have two gigabytes of GDDR5 connected with a 256-bit interface. Seeing that the video card came out in 2010, we will be using two operating systems. Firstly, Windows 7 64-bit, which is the operating system that reviewers used at the time when this video card launched. But because this is also a very powerful video card with XP compatible drivers, we will check out Windows XP as well. Here are all the parts for the system. Let's take a closer look. We are going with a system from the IV Bridge generation. Asus motherboard, the P8H77M LE, and we have the Intel Core i7-3770, which can turbo up to 3.9 gigahertz. This is a fairly typical motherboard, two DDR3 slots, PCI Express, 16x, 1x and 4x as well as PCI. We have two SATA 3 and four SATA 2 ports. PS2, we have four USB 2, two USB 3, VGA, DVI and HDMI as well as gigabit ethernet and audio. I made sure we have the latest BIOS. I loaded the XMP profile for the memory. I turned off hyper threading, but I left all four cores active and also turned off the ethernet port and the integrated audio because we're using a dedicated sound card and I'm not gonna use networking in this project. For Windows XP, a Western Digital Blue with 500 gigabytes and for the RAM from G-Skill, a four gigabyte dual channel memory kit. And for Windows 7, we're using a Crucial MX500, also 500 gigabytes. And for the RAM, slightly more RAM, eight gigabytes of dual channel memory from Kingston. Sound does matter in games and especially under Windows XP, we want EAX audio. Play with headphones and you get some terrific surround sound. So this is the Sound Blaster x Phi Titanium for PCI Express. And yeah, hasn't let me down so far for gaming. This is pretty much as good as it gets. 
Let's start testing this video card with Windows XP. We're using Windows XP Professional and then I'm loading the drivers with the Snappy Driver Installer Origin project. I make sure to unselect graphics and audio. We're then loading the latest Catalyst 14.4 drivers. You can download them still from the AMD website and for the sound card, we're using the Daniel K X5 support drivers 5.0. How do I get the games, the drivers and the benchmarks onto the machine? I just use a simple USB hard drive. Under Windows 7, we get USB 3 speeds a little bit faster. Now, disclosure, I am a GOG affiliate and I made that decision when Steam stopped supporting Windows XP and Vista. So I stopped buying games from Steam. I buy them exclusively now from GOG, have over 1000 games and yeah, I have them on my hard drive. You don't need internet connection, you don't need CD keys, no DRM, you just run the installer offline, install your games and off you go. Let's run some 3 Mark benchmarks. In 2001 SE, 77,233. In 3 Mark 03, we're getting 95,415. So we're getting a higher score here because this benchmark is less bound uh, on the CPU, the video card makes more of an impact. And in 3 Mark 05, we're getting 35,522. And before testing individual games, I like testing Far Cry. This is one of the more demanding Windows XP games. And let's test Far Cry with ultra details and 16X and isotropic filtering across uh, three resolutions as well as with multi-sample anti-aliasing. And yeah, it doesn't matter what level of anti-aliasing and what resolution you're using, you're gonna get uh, yeah well over 200 FPS. So here the video card is totally bored. The processor is holding things back. Let's give the video card a bit more of a workout. We are changing anti-aliasing to super sampling anti-aliasing, which means the video card will render at a much higher resolution and then downsample the image for a better image quality. And here we can now see uh, as we increase the level of super sampling anti-aliasing, the performance does go down, but even at 1600 by 1200 with 8x super sampling anti-aliasing, we're still getting over 60 FPS. However, that is only the average FPS in a benchmark. Here we are playing the game at 1280 by 960 with 8x super sampling anti-aliasing. And especially in the beginning, as soon as you step outside and uh, you get close to the beach, you will see that the FPS uh, does struggle. It does dip below 60, but most of the time uh, it will run at over 60 FPS, even with these demanding settings. So Need for Speed Underground, this game was released in 2003. And yeah, digitally, you can't really obtain this game anymore. It's to do with copyright licensing. I believe it's to do with the music that was included in the game. Such a shame. So you have to source this game, well, either online or buy a used copy. So here we're running at 1280 by 960. The game is locked at 60 FPS and it runs silky smooth and looks absolutely beautiful. The same goes for Need for Speed Underground 2. Again, at 1280 by 960, all the details are maxed out. And this game is from 2004, so a little bit more recent. It doesn't really look that much better. It's got a different approach to playing the game with uh, you having to roam around and find uh, challenges. So it's a little bit more open world. Both games absolutely brilliant and uh, definitely something to check out for Windows XP retro gaming. Fear is next. This game is a real showcase for the X-Fi sound card. Play it with uh, headphones in the dark with surround sound and CMSS 3D activated in the driver, a fantastic experience. We're using 1280 by 960 with soft shadows. Uh, you cannot use anti-aliasing and soft shadows at the same time in this game. The game is from 2005 and it runs, yeah, silky smooth on this video card, no challenge at all. Older games also work pretty well. This is Serious Sam 2. I've cranked up 8x super sampling anti-aliasing and it looks absolutely stunning. 
um, the video card has no problem running this game at a few hundred FPS, absolutely smooth. And this is Tomb Raider Legend running at 1280 by 960. Here I could not get super sampling anti-aliasing working. There is some anti-aliasing uh, in the game options which I've activated and yeah, again, this is a game that runs pretty well. Now let's move on to Windows 7 64-bit. So I upgraded the RAM and I swapped out the SSD. This time we're using the drivers from the ASUS website and I downloaded the chipset drivers, the Intel management engine drivers as well as the USB 3 drivers. We've got the latest AMD Catalyst 15.7.1 drivers and again for the sound card we're using the Daniel K X5 support drivers 5.0. For some reason under Windows 7 I ran into, yeah, more issues compared to XP. That was quite surprising. Here's the first one. This is Far Cry 2 and yeah, we're getting decent FPS over 100. But then I saw these NPCs that seem to be jumping around or hopping around and yeah, right away I thought that might be some timing issue, some timing bug. I've seen this happen in older games under Windows 98 as well. So I launched the game again, turning on VSync in the options and yes, now the uh, NPCs don't hop around anymore. Seems to be uh, some sort of glitch happening in this game. By the way, this game is from 2008 and I had a look at the recommended specifications. At the time, people had either something like a Core 2 Duo or an Athlon 64X2. And for the video card, they're recommending a GeForce 8000 series or a Radeon X 19000 series, just for reference. This is Bioshock and like many games, this game has two render paths, one for DirectX 9 and one for DirectX 10. You can use the DirectX 9 option by just running it under Windows XP or by using a command line option to force it. I tried toggling VSync just to see what happens uh, because uh, out of the box it's locked at 60 FPS but the game crashes whenever I try to toggle VSync. So there's a workaround. I use the PC gaming wiki website, has fantastic information and you need to edit the configuration file. Here you can disable VSync as well as set the anisotropic filtering to 16x and yeah, now the game runs really well. It's from 2007 and once again, the uh, system recommendations at the time evolve around a Core 2 Duo or Athlon 64X2 with a GeForce 8000 series GPU. The troubles continue with Dead Space. So this is a really fun game. However, there are some control issues if you have VSync uh, disabled in the game options. Uh, it happens when you move forward and try to turn with the mouse at the same time. It doesn't respond very well, makes it really annoying. And if you turn on VSync in the game, it will VSync at half the refresh rate, only 30 FPS, which is not a good experience. If you have an NVIDIA GeForce card, you can just activate VSync in the driver and that will fix this issue. But with the Radeon cards, and I've seen this on many systems before, that workaround just doesn't work. So you have an option, either play at a laggy 30 FPS or with an unlocked frame rate, but then you've got uh, unresponsive controls. That's with an ATI Radeon video card. So this is one of those games where you're better off having a NVIDIA. Prince of Persia is next. This game is from 2008 and can you believe it? Another game with issues. What's going on here? Windows 7, I thought things would be smooth, but yeah, so what happens in this game? Uh, we're running at 1920 by 1080, all details maxed out, and it just stops loading at the uh, loading screen. It just gets stuck and did a quick Google search. And once again, enabling VSync solves the issue. So now the game loads and yeah, seems to be perfectly capable of handling the 60 FPS all of the time. Again, at the time people had a Core 2 or an Athlon 64 X2 for reference. So the Radeon HD 6970 is not a bad video card, but can it run Crysis? Here we have Crysis running at 1080p. Now this is the 64-bit version, the GOG release, and it's running the DirectX 10 
render path with all details maxed out to very high, just the motion blur, I've turned that off. And it's doing a fairly decent job at running crisis. It doesn't hold 60 FPS all the time. We can see that in the beginning. So later in the game, there will be some areas where the card will struggle, but you can just dial down the details a little bit to high and then you should be able to get a fairly decent experience. So yes, I would say this video card does run crisis. So guys, what is my take on the Radeon HD 6970? Let's start with Windows XP. Performance is outstanding. It's fantastic. Doesn't matter what game, what resolution, what settings. You can crank all the sliders to the right side. You can increase the resolution. You can use 16x anisotropic filtering, 8x uh, anti-aliasing, even super sampling anti-aliasing and you will have a fantastic experience. The drivers are decent even under Windows XP for example with the HDMI port you get the GPU scaling, you get the pixel format with the uh, full color range and the limited color range and you can also do overscan and underscan adjustments. The reason I point this out is because with the uh, final NVIDIA cards and drivers, you don't get those options. And I know some of you, someone will be out there with an older TV that really appreciates these settings. Under Windows 7, at least in the games we tested, they were a little bit older, not from 2010 um, when this card was released. We tested games from around 2008 and 2007 and they ran also perfectly fine. However, we did run into quite a few technical issues and most of them uh, seem to be related to the frame rate. Uh, the card running too fast and then the game's breaking for some reason. So enabling VSync seems to be a fix for many of these games. Very curious to hear from you if you have experienced similar issues and also very curious to learn is that the same under Windows 10 or Windows Vista or is it just an issue with games? Honestly, I thought uh, speed sensitive issues are a thing of the past. We've seen this with old DOS games and maybe a little bit under Windows 98, but um, with modern coding and, and, and programming languages, I was really surprised to run into so many issues with Windows 7 era games. Is this a card you should rush out and buy? For Windows XP, maybe it is. It is one of the final video cards with official uh, Windows XP driver support. Uh, what you need to look for is the graphics core next one generation of video cards. That is the final uh, range of video cards, I believe. There's one more series past this one, the 7000 series, um, which is also compatible with Windows XP. But in terms of performance, it's not going to get too much faster than what this card can do. For Windows Vista and Windows 7, I see this video card of interest if you try to build a hybrid machine that can do both. Windows XP and Windows Vista. At least from my memory, that time was a really awkward period because games uh, were supposed to run on both operating systems. And for a while I had a, a dual boot machine. I would have Windows XP and then also Windows Vista because more and more games got DirectX 10 patches. So you would see some better graphical uh, effects under Windows Vista and even some um, more benefits with the 64-bit uh, versions. So that's why I think this video card could become very interesting, definitely very strong for Windows XP and also very useful for a Windows XP, Windows Vista slash Windows 7 hybrid gaming PC if you want to cover two errors uh, of games. And now I would love to hear from you. I'm very interested in hearing about the transition from Windows XP to Vista slash Windows 7 and what sort of hardware, what sort of games were you into in 2010? If you enjoyed this video and want to learn more about some Radeon video cards, I will put some videos for you on the screen to click on and check out. And yeah, that's it. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Give it a like, leave a comment, share the video with your friends and I shall see you soon with another one.